everyone. Welcome back to another edition of the Best Women's Boxing Show, period. I am Cynthia Conte, and I miss my and, co-host. And I am Giandra LaBeouf out here in parts unknown. Don't worry about where I'm at. Just know that I'm always watching. I'm always uh, watching. But always yeah, watching. it's good to be back with you. And we got some we got some good topics to talk about. We haven't done a run it back in a while. So I know. I'm like, usually we get to talk about some, you know, stuff going on, but we can't because we're short on time. Uh lots happened this past weekend. Uh the big uh what was it? The Battle of the Baddest in Riyadh. My goodness. Let's just start with Joshua versus Nganu. Wow. 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 Joshua is back. He work, He was working in the lab. He looks like the Joshua that we saw before Andy Ruiz took his soul I, in both fights. Uh, what did you think of that fight? What did you think of those knockouts and knockdowns? I thought it was magnificent. That's what should be done whenever these MMA guys try to step into boxing. He came back in full effect. What I really appreciated, I mean, he just really looked himself. There was no doubt. He came out strong. Maybe this little wheel of trainers thing that he went out with uh, Garcia and then uh, Derek and then now back, now he's with Ben Davis. Ben Davidson I'm and Lee Wiley. And Lee Wiley and whatever is going on in that camp did great thing. I don't know. Maybe Ben is just kind of like a, a Jedi master because remember, he picked up Tyson Fury when Fury was bouncing back and losing weight. He, he has the right thing to tap in. And it's funny because that team, Ben Davison and Lee Wiley, Lee Wiley is, they're both boxing geniuses. Like the way Lee Wiley breaks down uh, fighters and the game itself, it's kind of like a different part of the brain that we don't understand. And uh, that is also a part of Devin Haney's team. Just to remember mm -hmm. that. Yeah, so uh, I think it's good. And uh, I don't know if you caught a glimpse. I know everyone did because I saw a lot of memes that when Fury saw the knock out, the knockdowns, it was like, oh shit, I couldn't do that. You know, he, you know, <laughs> Tyson Fury is, is, is like a movie star now, not a movie star, but like a TV star. I think when yeah. that first fight came around, because reality show, yeah, it's his reality show on Netflix yeah. and stuff. But, um, you know, Father Time is undefeated, number mm -hmm. one. Number two, you can't cheat the grind. So yes, he's a skilled man. He's a boxing man, as he always says, but you can't cheat the grind no matter who you are. Now, I know that we had this conversation before and Ganu was almost shocked the world when he fought uh, Fury, which he did shock the world. He, you know, he, he really disrupted boxing. Now, after what you saw, do you want to see Nganu back in a boxing ring? And if you do, no. who would you like? <laughs> You're like, that was quick. No, man. Not even against Wilder? No, no. I just don't think that, I, I feel for Nganu. I feel like Wilder, if he can get himself together, will do the exact same thing. Yeah. He will do the exact same thing. But maybe that is the path for us to finally get the Wilder-Joshua fight. Maybe Wilder has to do the Nganu thing too. And then maybe we get Wilder-Joshua during the next Riyadh season because it's not all year long Riyadh season yeah. it's just a certain part like the fall fall springs fall winter springish so maybe yeah. he does get the Nganu fight somewhere there in Saudi that's not part of Riyadh week and then we get them for the next Riyadh week yeah I'm definitely and watching it can you imagine that he's the only man in boxing who's 0-2 has made 30 million dollars that's insane that is not that too is shabby. Insane. Okay, talk about <laughs> expensive sparring partners. My God, the price just went up. If you want to spar, uh, raise your rate because look at you got a whole MMA guy getting big time fights here, but nothing. Price but yeah, a lot of people are like MMA fighters need to stay out because it's just different. Uh, so yeah. All yeah. right, call me in a bit. This one was a doozy. I was I was betting. I and I was I didn't know what to bet because the the man that was supposed to win was a uh, big bang Zhang. And he was the he was the A side against Joseph Parker. Joseph Parker has been very, very busy. This is the man who lost and Big Bang Zhang beat uh Joe Parker. What I, I don't know. And I someone I said, what happened to Big Bang Zhang? He took his foot off the gas, and it's just I, I don't know what happened. And when he, when they announced the winner, he looked shocked. 
He was like, huh? Wait, what are you talking about? Parker, Parker and Parker came down from two knockdowns. How, what a fight. I know sometimes, you know, you, the, the guy who climbs out of the adversity you know, can do, can, can pull the impossible, the possible out of the yeah. impossible. I'm happy for him. I, he, you know, he always seems like a nice, respectable man. He comes in to compete. He never phones it in. I never would have predicted this outcome, particularly with the two knockdowns, but that's pretty also, I don't know what happened to Big Bang Zang. Was he like, where does he train normally? And was he there ahead of time? Uh, I just, I think he knows, I, I don't know where he trains normally. I think he trains in New York. I'm not sure, but it was, it was such a good fight because uh, Joseph Parker always fights with his heart. But yes, uh, it was such a good finish. And uh, now Joseph Parker is back in the mix always. And hey, like I said, the heavyweight di division is alive. And the next we have the Fury Usyk. Whoever wins is going to fight Anthony Joshua. That was based off of um, his his excellency, uh, Turkey Ale Sheikh. Forget the sanctioning bodies. <laughs> He's making he all said, the rules. I got the money. <laughs> I got the money. We can make it happen. You know, do you think Tyson Fury retires if he drops the belts to Usyk? It's kind of, it's kind of time. Hell, even if he wins, he might want to retire. Does he uh, want that Joshua heat? He says, okay, if, if, if Tyson Fury loses to Usyk, or no, if he wins, yeah, it would probably be the biggest fight in 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 boxing. I mean, for British, especially for Britain, they have to. They have to do it for the UK. If they don't, I think they'll say Tyson ducked. You know, in the mm, sense, mm -hmm. you know, it, and who knows? But yeah, if they uh, get that fight, I, I'm with you doing it for Britain. I hope they take it back to like Wembley or one of the big to. massive arenas so that the fans can go. Shout out to Turkey Ala Sheikh, but you know, let fans get some too. I know we do. All right. So now in our new section of what the fuck news, we just said a duck. We just said a duck. And uh, Canelo has been, you know, like you said, Jedi minding everyone. He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly who was going to fight. He said it wasn't going to be a Mexican. And it sure is a Mexican. And it's not David Benavides. It is Jaime Munguia. Good for him. We're getting a Mexican all out war single de Mayo weekend. And not Edgar Verlong. Right. And, you know, shout out to Canelo. You know, I think about um, Miguel Cotto, how Miguel mm -hmm. Cotto had this great relationship where, you know, I think Canelo's just gangster with it. You know, he's like, I'm not doing it. Cotto just had this kind of like amicable relationship with everybody where he could do a fight here and do a fight there. Canelo left the people and then came back to the people and probably getting more money per, I'm, I know the money is insane. Reminds me when NBA players have the final year of their contract and then they drop out and then they renegotiate and then they get a big like bump or whatever, whatever. But at any rate, good for Canelo. I mm -hmm. didn't want to see no Berlanga fight. Good for him. Go ahead, redheaded boss. <laughs> he can you imagine he said no to PBC prime pay-per-view for the three fights that he signed last year when he was supposed to fight the Charlo brothers and possibly Spence. It was, we, we all thought it was Benavides, but apparently he wasn't even on the list. And then mm -hmm. uncle Al was like, no, 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 we're going to have to renegotiate. If you want this ginormous payday, DAZN wasn't going to pay for it. You're going to have to fight them. And he said, no, went to DAZN. No, came back. Let's do a one fight deal. I think it's very smart. I think it's brilliant. And, you know, I've been enjoying some of the revisionist history that's online about, oh, he got over on uh, Al and I'm not an Al, like beat the drum for Al Heyman or nothing like that. But he did the same thing when he had the other big deal when they were trying to get him the Triple G fights. He did the mm -hmm. exact same thing. He was supposed to have like a gajillion fights on that deal and he ended the deal before he fulfilled all the number of fights. He's He, he has the right team behind him to get to the money. That's what it boils down to. It's not one-upping this or that. It's who he has negotiating for him and they are doing it right. Do you think Canelo will fight David Benavides? I mean, it's a, it's an ongoing question, but Giandra, yeah. do you think Canelo will ever fight David Benavides? It's not to the point where yeah. usually they say they're going to age out the fighter. Canelo's the older one. David's going in his prime. 
Yeah, because David is still a young and David is still under 30 somewhere. Yeah, there, and I he's think. moving up in weight because he's like, screw it. I'm, I don't care about this canal fight. He, he doesn't want to fight me. Jim Lampley, I heard him say it on the three knockdown rule. He's like, what do you think? He's like, quack, a.k.a. <laughs> <he's ducky." laughs> and I mean, and yeah, it's an expensive duck, but who cares? He's he he calls the shots, unfortunately. It, it's a great question. You know, I really I just don't know. If he does, it'll probably have, see, it's like two things at play here, because possibly he could fight him in his last fight, but there would have to be some kind of kinship there, because it literally would be a pass in the torch thing. If your feather and your cap is that you beat Canelo's ass. Yeah. And his way out the ring, that's, I feel like there has to be some kind of kinship there for you to say. I'm content with passing the torch. So I don't know. Maybe they're growing into that. Maybe Daddy Benavidez got to chill out a little bit. And, you know, we don't want him to chill a little bit. We want him to keep coming on the show. But yeah. I don't know. It's a it's an interesting thing. Because I remember when Floyd when it was in his last few fights. And his last fight was Andre Berto, I think. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, you know, Floyd never fights any brothers, never fights any brothers, never fights any brothers. I don't know. Maybe Canelo is on his, like, swan song of, you know, Canelo might pop up and say after this fight, he retiring. You never know. We don't know. You know, he has yeah, other know. ventures. He's a producer. He just produced an, an, a, a really cool movie about the uh, golf, like the Mexicans. They were caddies. So I can't wait. And you know how much he wants to be a golfer. Probably will be like a race car driver. Who knows? The man can do whatever he wants. Um, and then in other news that was dropped today that you sent me in what the fuck news. Go ahead, Giander. You tell me. Fuck. All right, kids, lean in. We got some serious news for you. Everybody lean in. Blair Cobb is now a fighter under Don King promotions. Don King, man, oh man, oh man. It's like weekend at Bernie's at this point. I feel like they just will him places and he's not really there. No disrespect. But what, I don't, I, how does this keep happening? How does this keep happening? I, I, I don't know. The last person we found out that signed with him was, uh, what's his face? Adrian Broner. And how many times exactly. has he fought? zero or no one one fight i think he did no i think uh, i think he no that was on the prime thing that wasn't yeah he was supposed he, to fight a couple of people then he came out mental health or something then when i interviewed him he was he wanted to fight regis i'm like oh regis is kind of busy with another fight uh with Devin haney and I, I don't know and he got paid remember the stacks of bills that he was showing off i don't know maybe Maybe what's Blair Cobb fight at 140, 147, something like that. One, Maybe they're one. bringing him over there. Maybe they're bringing him over there to fight Broner. <laughs> Imagine. I mean, okay. If that happens, that would be the best press conference and uh, leading up woo! to a fight. Wow. I wouldn't even know who would win in the battle of the shit talking. <laughs> <laughs> that alone is a fight I would watch. <laughs> that Absolutely. should be on pay-per-view. <laughs> We're going to have to hit Blair Cobb up. He's been on with us. Blair Cobb, if you're watching, hit us up. We want to talk about this. We want to know. I want to hear from the horse's mouth how this mm -hmm. even went down. So Blair Cobb, holler at us for sure. Yes. Uh, and then uh, let me, before we get uh, to our final, final topic, I just want to get in there that um, the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame uh, 2023 and 2024 classes were announced. I'll put a little Ooh. screenshot of all the people and it's going to be August 9th and August 10th here in Las Vegas at the Orleans Hotel. So finally, we get uh, the class inducted uh, this year for two years, two past years. And then um, awesome. fights, it's fight week here, Golden Boy, uh, Zapata versus Hughes. One of my favorite fighters, Eric Priest is on the card. I know you really like him too. So unfortunately we didn't get to interview him, but I will catch him at fight week. And I'm going to get all the scoop on the whole, Os this Ryan Oscar. Thank you guys for sh watching our stuff. We You have no idea. I didn't know the, the, the stuff that came out of Ryan's mouth and Devin's and Oscar. Yes, it was a little controversial and out there, but yes, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate you sharing our content. And yes, we hit our first, we're almost at 2 million on TikTok for this one video. That's insane. And don't, That's and don't forget. Insane. Let me not all, make no hand signs like that. I, don't I know, don't. Know. They'd be like, what? You, <laughs> remember Theophimo said you can't do this? Because it's, yeah. yeah. 
So yes. we got to, them two need to get together. We need to do a show. With I two. wonder if they have talked. I mean, Ryan has been dropping a lot of interesting, interesting things. And I'm not going to say it's not true. I, I do believe in a lot of things he says. It's just, I think the way he goes about it and tells people and preaches about it, it's not the best way, but you know, I just, I pray for him. I pray for, I, I pray this fight actually happens. If not, we mm-hmm. have um, Barbosa waiting in the wings. Uh, and then um, Alicia Baumgartner is back. She's um, her Alicia, suspension. Yes. Has, I'm, I'm a little confused because I don't know if ABC has fully suspend, uh, lifted her suspension, but I see her training in with Devin Haney. So we're going to have to get her on the show to see what she is. But I know that they have a purse bid with Delphine Pursun, her mandatory. Um, and Ooh. then uh, what's this called? Jessica McCaskill. She's not giving her rematch to Sandy Price, uh, Sandy Ryan. She's giving it to uh, Price. That's going to be, I don't know. Price is hard. I, 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 I like her. I like them both, but yes. Okay. And then now to our final, Giandra, you take this one away because you had the pleasure in interview, interviewing him. Thank you so much. So now we will transition. Uh, Please stay in with us. And recently we caught up with Callum Walsh, who will be fighting this weekend in New York. He is really growing and really adding to his exposure and his popularity. Tickets are selling well for him at the Garden. If you're in New York, go see him. Of course, he's got the co-sign of Dana White. Recently saw him on WWE. So shout out to him and the team behind him, Tom Loeffler, for really pushing him and we're going to tune in to see if this Irish man is going to be the next big thing in boxing. But so far, he's on the right path. So here's our conversation with him at the Wild Card Gym. We'll be caught up with him just recently. I'm sure you've talked about this at nauseum already, but when we saw, I was very thrilled as a wrestling fan to see you over at WWE. Did you have a good time? What was the experience like? I know they treated you well. Yeah, it was, my, it was actually my first time going to WWE, and I loved it. I love it, even though like it's it's scripted or whatever, like all it's, it's unbelievable. You know, the, every single person in the crowd knows the whole story. They know everybody's walkout song. They're mm-hmm. cheering for it. You know, it's like I was talking to, to Michael Chandler, the UFC fighter, when we were there. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about like how crazy the fans are. Like imagine if the fight fans were mm-hmm. were as crazy as the WWE fans were. Because every every walkout, the whole crowd, every single person mm-hmm. was singing the song. Everybody was cheering. Like they were letting off fireworks. Like oh, it was crazy. There's a certain like kinship in that. Like uh, soccer fans or football fans, when you go to other countries and everyone sings and everyone knows the songs. Do you? Do you think you can mobilize your fan base into having something that they chant and they sing every time you fight? Yeah, you know, the, the most important thing for me is um, whether you you hate me or you love me, you know, you're going to be a fan of my fights. You know, I'd rather people be a fan of my, my fights than just be a fan of me, you know, that they show up to see me fight just because they know it's going to be a good fight or it's going to be an exciting fight, you know. Mm-hmm. Everybody is there just to see good night of fights mm-hmm. and I think that's more important than just having your own fans you know because you're going to have people that are going to like you and then you're going to have people that are going to hate you mm-hmm. but whether you like me or him you know it's going to be a good night you know you're coming to fights to see an actual fight you know, and that, that's what I want I think that's a good thing with the WWE you know that everybody goes there because you know it's going to be entertaining mm-hmm. you know, more, even though it's not actual real you know it's scripted but it's going to be entertaining that's, that's a big thing for me you know people show up because they want to be entertained mm-hmm. every time we get a chance to see you as as fans as media the fights get tougher and tougher what do you think about your own growth in the sport from your first professional fight to now how do you what is your perception of how you've grown as a fighter yeah, i feel like I'm, I'm i'm growing and i'm learning every single day you know every day i come in here to pretty i'm learning something new you know i'm sparring very hard here i'm sparring tough fighters and i'm learning every single day in the gym and yeah you know i need i need to get tougher fights i need i need tough fights because there's no point in me fighting someone i'm going to knock out in 20 seconds you know what i mean it's not doing anything for me my last fight i fought 10 rounds and i learned a lot from that you know and uh i fought 130 140 times already you know i've had a lot of amateur fights, I've won a lot of fights, so I'm not here to just fight easy fights. You know, I've had them fights back in the day as an amateur. Mm-hmm. Obviously, pro is different, but I feel like I'll learn a lot more in tough fights than I will in, in easy ones, you know. So I feel like I'm learning, I'm growing every day, and uh, it's going well. I just want to just keep keep pushing myself, keep keep getting tougher fights, and, and figure out like how good I really am, you know. That's, that's a big thing for me, too. I want to actually know 
how good I am. Mm-hmm. I can just guess and I can think and I can watch these other fighters and think I can beat them, but you don't know until you get in there, bro. You know what I mean? So that's what I want to do. I want to fight top level fighters and, and see how far I can go. Mm-hmm. I like that you you are you keep a low profile, but in a sense you are high profile because of the, the relationships that you have. How do you keep that balance for yourself, keeping yourself humble and grounded, but you still have all of these high profile connections? Well, it doesn't matter for me who who I'm dealing with, you know, where I'm dealing with the, the president or, I, or I'm dealing with some fan of the street, I see everybody's saying, you know, everybody's just a person to me, you know, obviously it's cool and it's nice to be dealing with such high level people, but everyone's just a person to me, you know, I see everybody the same, whether it's a, a fan asking for a photo or whether I'm talking to Dana White, you know, I'm always going to be myself, and I think that's the most important thing, you know, for for especially young people coming up, you know, a lot of it gets to their head and they, they try to be too good for their friends or you know fans or well I would never say no to a fan for a photo you know even when they ask me I'm thinking do you want a photo with me like you know it's just, in my head I'm just, just a normal fella you know I'm just, I'm just fighting I'm, I'm trying to win and just do as much as I can and uh, while I'm young. As I watch Freddie uh, wrapping your hands here and get ready to uh, work out for us, what is the what is the weekly schedule like for you when you're waiting for your next opportunity? How do you keep yourself loose and and ready for the opportunity? There's a rapper named Sugar Free that says, "If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready." So, what is that time in between like for you? Yeah, that's it. Like I, I stay ready all the time. You know, even when I go home to Ireland, I train, I spar back home. You know, I'm always training. I'm 23 years old. I don't have any excuses not to be ready. You know, um, so that's the thing, I'm just always training, I'm always I'm always fit, I'm always in shape, I'm always here sparring. Even when I'm not fighting, no, I'm always willing to get in there and spar with anybody. Help out the other fighters that are here, get ready for their fights. And, uh, because I could be called for a fight at any time. Mm-hmm. That's a big thing when you're when you're young too, you know, you have to stay ready because anything can happen. You could be called for for a fight and if you're not ready, no, that's why I'm always ready. Yeah. But I don't have, I have nothing else to do with anything, I don't work, no, I don't have any excuses not to train. Mm-hmm. Maybe like after a fight I'll take a week off, you know, and just take it late or whatever, but I'm out, I'm out. Do you have like a Mount Rushmore of athletes from Ireland, no matter what sport, your favorite athletic people who have come from Ireland that you hold in special regard? I don't know, there's, there's a lot of athletes from Ireland, you know, there's uh, the Katie Taylor, you know, the, what she's done in, in boxing and what she's done for Ireland in general. She's a massive uh, influence, you know, kind of following her footsteps, you know, fighting it together, you know, I want to sell out the, the big arena like her and uh, Serrano, you know what I mean? It's coming. Yeah, so, um, and obviously Conor McGregor, you know, I think that he's done in the UFC and box too, so he fought me with her, you know, so like, there's, there's, there's a lot of them, you know, there's too many to even name, you know, so, that's the thing, you know, we're a very small place, but we do have a lot of good fighters, you know, that's what we're known for, the fighting, and, uh, I just want to make, uh, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to copy anybody, you know, or try to be like anyone, I'm trying to just make my own, make my own legacy, and, uh, make my own path, you know? mm-hmm. Two more questions. What's the last thing you Googled? The last thing I Googled is actually like how much percentage apes are to, to humans. Or like how much percentage are humans apes? It's like 98% or something. I just Googled that last night. So I was wondering, I was, talk, I was talking to my girlfriend about that about it. And I was like, I'm sure like apes are like 98% human. I wear like 90% ape or something. And I looked it up, yeah, we're actually, we share like 98% of our DNA with chimpanzees. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. See, now I have to check that out. It's because, oh, do you know what it is? Because I call her an ape. That's what <laughs> <laughs> I call her an ape. Yeah, that's what. Okay. And, and then the last thing, uh, what did you what did you listen to? What do you what gets you up when you have to go do road work? You have to train. What's in your what musical playlist right now? What gets me up in the morning is my alarm. That noise. That gets me up in the morning. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't. I don't listen to music when I train. I never put on music. I don't listen to music. Mm-hmm. Train. Listen to myself. Listen to the voice in my head. I heard that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Jay, that, what a great interview. Isn't it great to always just be back in those hot, sweaty gyms and with the people that mm-hmm. just are so fun, so cool. And it was Freddie's birthday that week. And uh, it, it just, you know, it's, we get the pleasure of seeing these young I'm not going to say kids, but these young men and women come up and you said it. I believe, you know, under Tom Loeffler's wings, he's going to rise to the top. And with UFC, Dana White behind him, and he's already at the MSG. He That's basically his home. He is, he's selling out of that theater. Soon it will be MSG. 
Uh, but I can't wait to see him. I I know he struggled in his last fight, but that's a learning lesson. He went the he went the distance. So good for him. Great interview, Jay. I appreciate I appreciate you. I miss you so much. I miss you. I know. I miss you too. You guys, you know, maybe we'll tell you the story of this weird place where I currently <laughs> am. So but it's today a good thing. that day, but it's, it's a, good a good thing. thing. It's all part of the it's all part of growing the brand. So it we'll is keep rocking with us. We got a lot. We used to have so many interviews in the can, y'all, and other ones that we're got we've got coming up. So we ain't going nowhere. I know. And you guys make sure we remember we have a podcast. It's on the Blue Wire Network. Yes. Big names are on that network. And we're these la- these ladies who talk about boxing and sports and other shit. And we're on that network. So please uh take the time out. If you can't watch us, go to the uh podcast and just give us, we'll give you some airgasms. There you go. Yep. All right. Well then make sure you tune into all of our content on our YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, uh, 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 Blue Wire, uh, any of your, what is it called? Audio platforms. Yeah. Spotify, whatever you have, you listen to music, but we appreciate you. We appreciate your time. I miss you, Jay. Um, I will see you I soon. Miss you too. All right, guys. I'm Cynthia Conte. And I'm Giandra LaBeouf. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Best Women's Boxing Show, period. See you guys at the fights. Bye, guys.